All right, we got our combo. Let's go. Double sand swept tomb. Duty, selflessness, heavy burdens. Awesome. Yeah, buddy. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Katarina Talia. Didn't quite get to this deck at the end of yesterday's stream, playing it first today. Uh, this is going to be a, quite a different one. Don't, you know, haven't played these two champions together. And that's always fun, just experimenting in this game, putting champions together that you've never seen before. Um, this was a viewer submitted donation deck. That's what the two Ds up here mean if you're a newer viewer to the channel. And so we have a good amount of viewer submitted donation decks today. One deck I put together with the Echo Victor. Um, but let's check it out. So basically what we have is we have a Talia list. So of course with Talia, we're going to want to be summoning our five plus landmarks. And so we got a, a good amount of different landmark stuff in here, um, including a couple hibernating rock bears and assault spire. It's instead of playing like three copies of one of them, kind of splitting them up because of the mana cost. Both of them good cards to copy with Talia, but they're not the, our main target for Talia. That's going to be Sandswept Tomb. So I think the point of this deck is to be able to play Sandswept Tomb, copy it with Talia, because when you're attacking and you're getting 5-2 Ephemerals for each attack, those things are big and they hit They hit hard. They do a lot of damage. They like you know You're going to have to get some blockers in front of those. So Sandswept Tomb could be pretty sweet. And so I think the point here is to have, you know, multiple Sandswept Tombs in play and then rally quite a bit with Katarina. Use Katarina with the Summon Rally. Getting more attacks in with Katarina. Of course, Talia is a champion, especially when leveled up, that loves attacking also, right? Like each one of these attacks is like a really good ability. So you just want to keep attacking with your Talia, bringing those five twos in play getting this uh, really nice ability and everything like that. And so makes everything really hard to block. Like this is definitely a, a late game deck, right? Because it's it's going to take a while to get that all set up, to get like a Sandswept Tomb in play and a Talia in play and then your level Katarina. That's going to take a while to, to get uh, going. So I feel like we're going to struggle against the more aggressive decks. But if we can get that going, that's really powerful because it's... It's basically impossible to block Katarina with the quick attack that just goes back to your hand. It's really hard to block Talia with that ability that does six to the blocker. And obviously the the Sand Swept Tombs, these chargers, you don't want to be blocking these either. So like basically make blocking impossible for the opponent. Hopefully we can get to that point of the game. Uh, besides that, we got some hourglasses for protection. We have a good amount of vulnerable stuff. Rock Hopper, Merciless Hunter, Sand Spinner, Unraveled Earth, all sorts of like ways to give things vulnerable. Then we also have Treasure Seeker making some more Sandstone Chargers that are going to be great with the Vulnerables. Um, and Katarina, of course, is amazing with Vulnerable. Uh, and same with Talia. So there we go. That's going to be the deck. Let's get to it. Let's uh, hopefully get to some late games and give it a try. Lissandra Talia. This is the boogeyman of the format, especially for me. I don't seem to have very good su success against this deck. I uh, think I want to keep the first three. I guess we'll mulligan the Unraveled Earth. But honestly, Unraveled Earth is probably pretty good in this matchup. Uh, maybe the reason to mulligan is that we already have good 2, 3, 5 anyway. Would it be weird if I, like, did that? And <laughs> had Unraveled Earth on round 3? And not Merciless Hunter? That'd probably be weird, right? Okay, maybe let's just mulligan them both. We'll keep Glory Seeker and... You know what? I'll mulligan this too. Well, we can probably find a Sandswept Tomb for later. Okay. Alright, this this looks just fine. So Glory Seeker, we want to be able to kill... Like, a Lissandra with Glory Seeker. Because they do play like Ice Shard and everything like that. Alright, so we have one one Desert Naturalist that we want to find, hopefully. I, you know what? We have the Unraveled Earth Awakening Sands thing that like builds your own Glory Seeker and we got another Glory Seeker. I hope they don't have Ice Shard. Just take some damage. Yeah, take some damage. I should have played that first. While I was attacking, I guess because I wanted to do this. 
Okay, we're good. Catalina. All right, so we need Desert Naturalist. All right, do I want an Hourglass or just play a new Glory Seeker? I guess I just want to Hourglass, right? No, I guess it's better to play a new Glory Seeker and save Hourglass. I need just a moment. The cold creeps in. Let the bloodshed begin. I think we, with how well they have this set up, yeah, I just can't be too scared. You know, like that's the thing. If they have another avalanche, they got another avalanche, right? But like, we can't just like play real scared. Uh, we have to put pressure on them. At least they don't play, you know, like the five mana four five right now. They'd already played one avalanche, right? It wasn't like real good odds they had a second but unfortunately they did oh that shape stone would have been great last round wish we had desert naturalist <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you, F, that I, I really dislike this deck, too. I was uh, I was sad that there was no nerfs to this deck at all. And no, I do not I do not consider having Watcher be 5 instead of 4 a nerf to this deck. This deck doesn't care about that. I can unravel to Earth... Assuming they have nothing, I can have Unraveled Earth, play Talia, have Talia challenge the Frostguard Thrall, then basically trade Talia with Frostguard Thrall, and have Katarina kill Lissandra. Again, assuming they have nothing. This isn't a great plan. If I stumble, I have the Earth to catch me. So I'm just going to play the Talia right now, so I can have the Ancient Hourglass available for protection in, in case something happens. Okay. So making another copy of one of these just isn't Together, isn't important. Than stone, than the but wind. They're letting us attack. They're afraid. They should be. I feel like they want a frostbite, and so like if they want a frostbite. Like, I don't want to have Katarina challenge Lissandra because they want to frostbite the Katarina. Like, that's, like, good for them. They get to double up like that. Okay, no frostbite. No one gets in my way. That deck's impossible to beat, but GG's. Okay, Karma LeBlanc. So this should definitely be a Legion Marauder deck. Riding Negation is perfect against the 8-mana Legion Marauder spell. So I kind of want to keep it because of that spell, right? Like, they're, that's definitely going to be a big part of their deck. We got the Rock Hopper. 
to kind of slow down uh, Legion Marauder immediately. Bingo. I'm going to get this countdown started. And now we'll play Rock Hopper. So, like, they play Legion Marauder. It's vulnerable. They don't want to until after I attack. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay, because they're going to do that. Not gonna quite be able to have Talia For the Empire. copy that. Gonna make a meal of them. Look what I found. This one's a fighter. Definitely considering passing here. They waste a lot of mana. They want me to attack, and then I assume, you know, then play like Legion Marauder, Karma, LeBlanc, anything like that after combat. I think I'm just going to pass right here. Very good ride and negation keep. So wears away like grains of sand. Basically, the, the snap they want to throw the snapper in front of the Talia, and I do not want them to throw the snapper in front of the Talia. If they would have played another blocker, then, you know, then I'm probably playing the Waking Sands, but they didn't play the blocker. Alright, so they had two of those spells. Got some hourglasses. Hmm. So they have another sigil of malice in hand that we know about. I mean, I guess this just forces them to play their other sigil of malice right now. I guess. Yeah, guys. I guess we just force it. There we go. GG's. Katarina Talia. One on one. <laughs> That's like my favorite part about this deck is just saying those two champions back to back. They're both very fun champions to say. Katarina Talia. We got the Lurkers.
So I think, so we're playing against Lurkers, we've got to be pretty fast. I think I just kind of mulligan these and just keep this one mana 2-1 and just look for other things kind of earlier. It's... I don't know. Mulliganing champions never feels good, right? Cool, glad to hear everybody likes the little previews on the YouTube videos at the beginning, cool. Wait, what? Did that like put that in- wait, what just happened? Did they even- I guess they spent two mana to cast that. That didn't even look like they cast it. <laughs> that went so fast. Alright, we do have a backup Katarina. Katarina is the type of card you don't really need a lot of. You know, like, multiple Katarinas doesn't always help, but. <clears throat> I'm gonna go and play Katarina and trade it off here with being able to Blades Edge that thing. Let's have the Katarina be a good two for one. Uh, think about doing the Unraveled Earth. Or pass, I think, Unraveled Earth. Okay, so they have Rek'Sai on top. These Snapjaw Swarms are awesome. My, my opponent's done great with the Snapjaw Swarms. They've, you know, four rounds, they've lurked four times, had a Snapjaw Swarm on when they don't have the attack token each time. They have done great with that. So this thing's going to level up and be overwhelmed. Yeah, they've, they've done great with that. So that's too bad. Um, I guess we're going to go ahead and... I mean, I could Sand Spinner it, but... Sand, Sand Spinner would make them have to hit Lurk again for this to level up, which I guess that's the thing to do. Yeah. There's just a small chance that they don't hit Lurk for some reason. Aro says this is what a, a Lurk high roll looks like. Yeah. First first four rounds they've Lurked four times, including once a, an additional time. I guess twice an additional time. So they've, they've gotten six Lurks in four rounds. Maybe they miss. Miss. They missed. So why are they challenging here? Why don't they just challenge with the other thing? The thing that goes away. And they're saying like the GG's and stuff. What's... I'm very confused of what's going on right now. Let the bloodshed begin. Only fools hesitate. Three, six, nine, twelve. They're afraid they should be. Ha, they'll never know what I mean, I still think that we probably lose. Like, if they just have the, an overwhelm thing, we're going to lose this. What are they doing? Why do they play the one health thing? What it I Man, I am so confused about life right now. What is going on? So that was the top card whenever they missed their allegiance, and that's why I don't like playing this card. Oh, the free attack? The free attack, I need to play my hunter last round. I forgot about the free attack. Oh no. The free attack. 
Man, I, I was so confused about everything that was going on. Oh, no. Now after that we have to play the unbeatable deck. I don't like that the last few days people are actually starting to play this this, this Thrall deck now, because it is unbeatable. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Um, yeah, none of these cards do anything. No, nothing in our deck does anything. All right, so we need to find... We have one card that does anything. We have the, we have the one of the... Um, Desert Naturalist is a one of. So we need to get our one of Desert Naturalist. Quick hands make quick work. We didn't find it last time. Watch your head. Uh, Devil said, are you taking deck requests? Yeah, to, yes, you can get donation decks are you either donate ten dollars or you can use ten thousand channel points um to to get your deck played on stream like these other donation decks so the channel points are if you're you know in the stream watching um you know you're earning channel points all the time if i play something they're just going to avalanche if I don't play anything, they're going to play Lissandra. I, need just a moment. I guess I would rather they Avalanche than play Lissandra. It's just, it's just one turn slower for their thralls. Okay, that was just both of those. Desert Naturalist. Man, we need Desert Naturalist. So bad. No going back. I'm gonna play this thing. Allows me to open attack underneath an avalanche. I think because because of the shape stone, I'm doing this because basically, okay. So I attack, they play the the five mana four five or play Talia. I don't love either of those, but see, so I'm gonna play this first. And now if they play a five drop, then I go sand spinner, and if they avalanche, I have shape stone to protect Katarina, and then I get to glory seeker. Oh wow, that was a good option. That was a good option. Oh man, yeah, that was that was like a much better turn than than what I had planned. All right, well, so that's a good turn. I get to block the five three now. Yeah, good turn. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking like five, because if, if they had either five drop or avalanche, either way, we're looking great. This was like the. That's why this deck's unbeatable, right? It's like, what's what can they have that's perfect against me? And that's kind of it right there. That was kind of it. But it's okay. We still have now we have leveled up Katarina and Glory Seeker. We still have a good round, you know, good potential this round. We're not looking too bad right now. Oh yeah, I'm attacking with the 04. You never know. Maybe my opponent blocks the 04 and takes five from the 5-3. I don't know. I gotta give them the opportunity to do something weird. Is Freljord too strong? No, I don't think so. I think Lissandra's too strong. I think the card Frozen Thrall is basically because of Lissandra. But no, I don't I don't think Freljord's too strong. It's too likely if I play Glory Seeker that then they Avalanche slash Ice Shard. Right, so I think, yeah, I think I just take the attack here. Hamster says, Troll Chant too strong? Yeah, probably. Troll Chant probably is a little too strong. Victory. 
Victory requires a sharp blade. I'll cut them apart. So as long as they can't, you know, we're going to have four attackers, they're going to have three blockers. No going back. So, there we go. We actually beat this deck. First time ever. Wow. We actually won first time ever. First time, last time. Rally GG's two and two. All right. No, if you change Lissandra, you don't you don't just change Lissandra to be a one three. You have Lissandra not give all sorts of free value. Like make ice shards cost three mana. Like if you're getting absolutely free ice shards, like they should at least cost mana, right? Like make you know, make that cost mana. Make Watcher cost mana. Make something. With all the free stuff you get with Lissandra, it makes something cost me enough. Or have some kind of opportunity cost with it. I kind of like this hand. I think I do. Vitalia is a little out of place with this hand, but we have, you know, good early stuff already. I kind of like keeping just a powerful champion with having this other, you know, with good early stuff already. I think I should have mulligan Natalia. I could definitely see that at the Rock Hop Rock Hopper Merciless Hunter Shapestone part of the deck was a keep. What a shame for you. What a shame for you. Got it. Victory requires a sharp blade. Quick hands make quick work. Planning on playing Katarina, I think. Katarina kind of unlocks You're single combat, which is a card I think that they would want to play. Katarina works just fine against barrier, right? Like Katarina strikes the barrier, then goes back into your hands. Let the bloodshed begin. I guess I can't really stop Katarina single combat ever anyway. Yeah, that works just fine. I do have the Blade's Edge for the barrier, too. I don't think I Glory Seeker challenge the 3 2, though. I'll stop you. My board. I'm not going to get greedy. Use that blade's edge right there. I don't know. I just feel like that's greedy, and they use they use like single combat response. I'm I'm gonna just take it. I'm gonna take the take that. Like I'm I'm not scared of this three two, right? Like we trade with a, tr a treasure seeker. All right, stand swept tomb Talia. The fate of mortals and spirits falls to me. That's what I'm talking about. I sense an imbalance. All right, we got our combo. Let's go, double sand swept tomb. Duty, selflessness, heavy burdens. Awesome. Yeah, buddy. I guess I don't have to attack with that thing. For this thing, really. Just attack like that. No, you can attack. I guess. Okay, so we attack with Talia, they block Talia. Yeah, that's okay. It doesn't kill Talia, right? And then this is like a whole bunch of damage going at them. There is no dispute. Dude, double sand swept tomb. Let's go. I 
I'm out. <laughs> That's what Tali is saying. I'm out. See you later. Balance favors. All right. Definitely like the position that we are in. Especially with having all these cards, I certainly like the position we are in. So four out of five landmarks. It's not going to be easy getting the fifth. Or pleading the fifth. The land and give it life. Let the bloodshed begin. It must be done. The balance has been maintained. What form will the waters take? I still got this shape stone that I've been very patient with. To try to do something. Haha, -ha, opponent concedes. Dude, sand swept him. Let's go. Oh, what a great day. All right, very impressed there with Katarina Talia. Got that winning record, including playing against the Thrall deck twice. I guess if that deck's going to keep on popping up and being super popular. Probably are going to need another Desert Naturalist in here or, you know, I don't know, a Scorched Earth or something like that to be able to blow up those um, landmarks. But yeah, it worked out really well. That last game, we got to do the Talia Sandswept Tomb combo. Katarina was really good in these games. The Vulnerable was just awesome, right? Like, my opponents were, like, l consistently looking at all their cards and... Um, you know, just like, man, I can't really play anything because, like, everything would get vulnerable. Like, the Unraveled Earths were awesome. And then we'd have, like, good attacks with everything. And Treasure Seeker was really good. Like, these things with the vulnerable and just the 5-2s attacking in general. Um, yeah, very happy with that. A 3-2 record in ranked. That's good. And it could have almost been a 4-1. That Lurk match was, like, really, really weird, right? Like, that was just a really weird game. And who knows? Like, maybe if I would have played my Merciless Hunter and not gotten so... Um, so greedy with the Merciless Hunter and just had that out. Maybe we block that free attack and, you know, maybe we are able to win from there with the Katarina. Um, but yeah, that was that was really cool. Liked it quite a bit. <laughs> it's just fun playing weird stuff, right? Weird stuff is good. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. Leave those comments. Let me know what you think of this one. And uh, yeah, maybe this one, you know, did better than what you were expecting as well. Maybe you saw some like cool things about it, you know, like Unraveled Earth. Uh, to go along with Treasure Seeker, right? Like, that was a cool combination that we saw in here. Also, Unraveled Earth with Katarina and everything like that. But anyway, that's going to be it here for Katarina Talia. <laughs> that's just so much fun to say. Katarina Talia. Anyway, all right. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.